everyone. As you can probably tell by my hood as well as my cape, I am Red Riding Hood Minnie and Michelle. And today for this book review Wednesday, I'm going to be looking at the classic tale of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Uh, this one is in particular a rather famous one uh, that has existed throughout the years. And there have been various adaptations that have tried to sort of capture the kind of magic as well as mystery surrounding this figure, the Headless Horseman, that uh, exists within this tale. And so I thought it would definitely be interesting to look into the original source material here and uh, ultimately see what it's really trying to convey. Now, um, basically, the story in a nutshell follows the schoolmaster, or technically teacher, Ichabod Crane, who comes to the town of Sleepy Hollow and eventually encounters the Headless Horseman. Um, it is said that this Headless Horseman was supposed to be a soldier of some kind that um, got killed during the Revolutionary War. So this takes place, I believe, in like the 1790s, so fairly um, close to uh, the Revolutionary War as far as time period is concerned, um, even though it, 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 hap it obviously happened before, um, it's still roughly somewhat 20-ish years. So it, it only makes sense that um, these kinds of, I think, sorts of legends that sort of surround I guess a American figure would appear since this does take place within the state of Massachusetts. Um, and they even reference the Hudson River at one point, which is pretty cool. And so you really do get the sense of the sort of Americana kind of feel that it's trying to go with. Uh, but at the same time, what's really interesting too is, is, is there are a lot of elements within this book that are largely part of your and you will sort of see this inserted into the story uh, if you choose to read this book. Now, it's relatively short. It is not that lengthy. And it pretty much follows closely to the Disney adaptation. If you've seen uh, the Disney short that tries to capture this particular tale, it is fairly close to it probably the closest adaptation. So if you look into the Johnny Depp one, it's completely different. Um, but they do kind of portray Ichabod as this kind of, um, I mean, he, he is supposed to technically be the hero within the story, but he's kind of really the uh, also victim as well. And he also kind of tries to um, win over these people within the town, um, in particular with the ladies, which is pretty, pretty hilarious, and also trying to, uh, win the ultimate affection of a woman who has a wealthy father, because he thinks, oh, when he dies, I'll get all this money. Uh, so, yeah, uh, he's, uh, he's kind of not the most noblest of, of characters, and, and I think it only makes sense that, uh, that there would be, like, some sort of, um, misfortune that would happen to him, and that's what it really tries to boil itself down to within this story, I think, largely, um, and it's sort of similar in other tales that, uh, involve the characters, you know, engaging in some kind of, um, I guess you could say somewhat either immoral behavior or naive behavior, and in doing so suffering consequences. And I think that's kind of what the author maybe intended with this kind of a story. But it is very fascinating because uh, it really did get the sort of ball rolling for the United States into kind of adopting the European, uh, part, part, at least parts of European culture, and kind of making it part of their own. Uh, 
and making their own stories. And it's nice to see that this is one of the stories that sort of lives on. And I think it's largely due to the whole concept. I mean, this was a really great idea that the author, Washington Irving, had, which was to basically um, create a character that is headless and a horseman. And there is a lot of references that are fairly similar to Halloween that you will see within this particular book. Uh, in particular, pumpkins are uh, hugely emphasized. So even back then, there was there was this sense of trying to insert these kinds of um, symbols that uh, we come to kind of recognize even to this day. Uh, so you will see how the pumpkin is definitely utilized within this story, um, more so than you may realize, actually. And it also explains various other tales that are kind of associated with Sleepy Hollow, uh, in particular dealing with like witches and goblins and such. So it, this book really does get you into the holiday spirit. It does make you think about the things that we would think about around this time of year. And I like how there is this sort of build-up intention to Ichabod eventually encountering the Headless Horseman. And although this book is relatively short, in the same way that the Disney version is relatively short, it, it is an interesting um, approach into showcasing this kind of a story. And I think it ultimately really works and is very uh, enjoyable. And also other various adaptations that have really detoured away from the whole uh, initial concept, I also think have something interesting to offer. For example, the Johnny Depp uh, adaptation is rather interesting because they play it out as, if, as sort of Ichabod being a um, mystery solver um, and trying to figure out who's chopping off heads and such. But here... It's very stripped down, and it's not as complex. Um, it's just supposed to be a simple legend and uh, designed to be kind of just a folklore story. And almost, and even, and it was interesting too because this book was actually in the children's section. So I think, by and large, uh, it's even though it deals with the headless horseman. Uh, it's still largely a European-like tale that uh, focuses on trying to be, I guess, for children. Even though there's a lot of uh, European folk tales that really don't, uh, you, you initially wouldn't think would actually be for children, really. But um, it's definitely, I think, a worthy recommendation. This one had some illustrations to go along with it, so I thought that was cool and uh, made it all the more uh, enjoyable to read. And uh, and it's, it's again, it's, it's not designed to be too complicated or, and it's not even designed to be really all that simple. I mean, I think even kids would probably have a difficult time really grasping maybe certain concepts that exist within the story. But uh, it is still a cool one nonetheless, and I think definitely worthy of recommendation, especially around this time of year. But I think that's really ultimately all I can say about this particular book. However, if there are any questions, comments, concerns, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a pleasant day, week, month, and year, and I wish the next minion good luck, and I'm now going to be off to my grandma's house, but until hopefully next year, since I was here last year.